Hi, this is Mikey D, and this is going to be a short introduction into Stimulus Tools, just about how some of the things work in it, a general overview, and more detailed information uh, is available on the Steamless Tools wiki page. And if anything is missing or you should have any troubles with this video or anything, please submit a issues ticket. So we're looking at the Steamless Big Picture uh, mode interface. And it's going to look a little weird because for some reason the this uh, the Big Picture mode in, on VMware Workstation for me doesn't quite stretch out. But hopefully you'll be able to see things OK here. The first thing you want to do is go into Settings and into Interface. And you're going to make sure that you check the box to enable access to the Linux desktop. It'll give you a little warning um, and you'll hit OK. And once you go back to the main screen, hit Exit and you're going to want to do Switch to Desktop Mode. And that'll jump us into a uh, fairly standard Dome 3 desktop. Uh, because a lot of the standard fair Debian software has been stripped out of this, you're going to find that a lot of stuff might be missing. And the whole purpose of Steam West Tools is to, if you're, you're willing to take some of the risk, to be able to augment software in SteamOS, uh, maybe tinker with it, hack on it, uh, maybe extend things a little further than what's currently done. Uh, I must note that this is not the intended feature or, or purpose of SteamOS, but it does allow you to go ahead and, and mess with things, improve on software, and to otherwise generally improve uh, what's already available on SteamOS. And what we're going to do is if you click on activities in the top left, we're going to want to hit or type in terminal and enter. And once it shows up there, it'll pull up your, your terminal screen. And one of the first things you're going to do is do a pass WD to set the desktop user's password if you have not done this already. And we have done that previously, so we'll skip that step. And the next thing you want to do is ensure that we have uh, the Git software package installed so we can clone SteamOS tools. So the command for that is going to be sudo space app-get space install space git. And we should already have that. Punch in our password. And we already have Git installed. So the other thing, uh, in order to clone the repository, we're going to have to punch in a particular command. And this is available explicitly in the readme file um, because it is quite a long command. And it's going to be git space clone space the repository address. And we already have that cloned. So and once that finishes downloading, we're going to want to change in that into that directory. So we'll do a cd space and the, the name, so steamos-tools. And once we're in there, we're just going to do an ls to list the directory contents. You'll see quite a number of directories and files in here. And there's two key ones to keep in mind other than the obvious readme file. We have add Debian repos.sh uh, bash script as well as desktop software.sh, which is a bash script. And the first one, add Debian repos, if you want to only install software through the standard affair that we installed Git, so the app get install and package name, you can add the Debian repos, which will back up uh, sensitive files and add sources for uh, Debian software from the Jesse repository here on Brewma or, uh, with Brewmaster. Uh, the backports as well as Debian Multimedia, and then the newly created and hosted uh, LibreGeek package repository that I now have up as of the last couple of days. And we can run that command here, and we'll do a dot forward slash add, and we can hit tab, and it should do full tab completion, and we're going to hit enter there. And we already ran this command, or I did previously, so it's going to back up the previous uh, list, which is, and the reason I do this in case you do mess with your sources list and you rerun this command and you want to go back and make sure that you uh, restore anything that you have uh, had before. So it's going to update the package indexes, and we'll give this a second here. And do, in doing so, we're going to be able to have access to quite a bit of software. And in order to make things a little bit safer, I try to ensure proper apt uh, pinning so that any packages that are pulled from repositories besides Valve, it does not overwrite or attempt to overwrite uh, those packages. And uh, when we do run desktop software, you'll see there is a big warning that will implore you to read uh, the disclaimer to kind of 
make sure that whenever you're doing something like this that's outside what SteamOS is intended for, you're going to want to make sure that you create a uh, a backup. So when you boot up SteamOS and right before the uh, the menu were to load, if you you know hit escape a couple times, you're going to bring up a menu that's going to you can capture the root partition, and that will ensure that the system partition itself is backed up safely. Uh, in or if anything were to happen here, or if some package were to get through that was not pinned properly, or any any mistake uh, that's human error. And then we're going to go on, it's going to add the uh, Debian uh, multimedia keyring. And once this is done adding the Debian repositories, you're going to get a how to use summary that'll tell you how you can install packages. And what, what we're going to do is go up and we'll take a look another uh, another glance here at the, the files. And we'll just do a basic sudo apt-get install and let's choose a package from the uh, Libre Geek repository. And we'll choose Lutris, which is an open gaming platform. And it's going to go ahead and install a package for us. So we can go up to Activities and type in Lutris. And there we go. So this is a hosted package. Now, there are some packages that are hosted, and this is a perfect example. Uh, RetroArch is available through that same exact command. However, you will get RetroArch, and you can install the LibretroCores cores additionally. Uh, however, there's some post configuration in some software modules that I put in to help along uh, directory crea creation, uh, joypad auto configuration, um, and a lot of other things. So we could do a install RetroArch here, but what we're going to do to illustrate um, what desktop software uh, hooks in is we're going to do a dot forward slash desktop software sh, and we're going to do an install RetroArch. And what this is going to do is install RetroArch all the cores and do some post-install configuration, such as setting up public uh, Samba shares uh, and a couple other directories and paths. Make sure everything's all buttoned up nicely. So, like I've said before, it's going to show you a warning here, and it will check and see if you have the sources added that I mentioned uh, previously. If you do not have those, you're going to get a line here in the middle that's going to say on initial check those sources do not appear to be added. But we got the check that they are, so. We can hit continue, otherwise we could hit add or A for add Debian uh, sources. So we'll continue. And it's going to go through install RetroArch and the cores, which I previously had installed, so we don't have to wait or wait around for that. Configuring the paths, parameters, give you a little notice about the gamepad being auto-configured. Uh, Samba shares, and correct some permissions, and clean up the packages. And that's it. So um, that's a basic overview of the two main functions. There are a lot of other uh, scripts and things in here, uh, such as such as things in the utilities, build scripts in there, um, and a lot of other things. You know, a few uh, files here and there, uh, configuration text. But to show you, then RetroArch just give you an idea of what it looks like, because that's one someone's or a lot of people are very interested in half the time. Uh, we're gonna get out of here, out of our terminal. Just exit out of that, and we're going to return to Steam. And again, a lot of this information is on the wiki, so please do visit that and read through the README and the disclaimer. So we're going to go back in here. Now, normally to add non-game or non-Steam shortcuts, you would go to Library and but and hit the plus sign. But in the beta client, they moved that now to here in the settings. So we'll go to Add Library Shortcut, and I do have to correct the artwork for RetroArch. Uh, if it's not already in here. And I believe I did previously add this, so we'll go into our library and we'll do go under install. And then here is RetroArch. So I did uh, get one of the banners with permission from the LibRetro team and it does show up so you're able to identify that. And a little bit of the new interface in the uh, client beta and we'll do play here. So there we go, uh, there's RetroArch and um, all the cores as you can see are installed and uh, some some systems will have multiple cores as well. And if we go into the settings to illustrate the post install configuration, we'll go in the directories and you'll see that uh, the BIOS directory is set, um, the ROMs is home steam ROMs which is sim linked into the desktop users ROMs directory so you can pour the ROMs into there and of course this information for this is in the wiki entry under RetroArch. 
So just to illustrate, there was post configurations there, um, but you can install it normally if you do not want those post install configurations by just doing the apt-get install retroarch. So hopefully a lot of this um, doesn't is not over your head or, or makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, I usually hang out in the uh, SteamOS channel on, on freenode.net, and I'm usually there or on the SteamLug uh, channel as well. So you can find me a lot of different places. Uh, submit an issues ticket on GitHub. I'm usually on the uh, subreddits SteamOS and Linux underscore gaming. So that was a basic overview of SteamOS tools, and hopefully um, it gave you a kind of an idea of what it's there, what it's meant to do. Um, and again, please make sure that you make proper backups before tinkering or hacking on software here. Um, you want to make sure that you're protected if you're using this on your main installation, which I do implore that you use it on a, a secondary machine if you have not run through things before. Um, but that's SteamOS Tools. This is Mikey D, and I hope you enjoyed watching.